Good evening, and welcome to another edition of Diatribes from the Voice of Doom. And now here's your extemporaneous and somnambulant host, Voice of Doom. Good evening, everybody. And ni hao. And, uh, night time I'm tired but I haven't done a diatribe in like a day and a half and I know you guys miss me I really do um, you know I wanted to commemorate certain holidays which I learned to not be too excited about in fact some holidays opened my eyes to just how delusional we are and how we are not educated by any sense of the word. If we wanted to be educated, we'd listen to everything and we'd get a lot out of everything because everybody has their points, believe me. Even the CRT and the idiot fascist left-wing People that don't know what they're getting themselves into are have points. And one of the points is, you know, like this Columbus Day thing. Now, I learned a long time ago, I read this guy, I got into him a bit, and he's one of my favorites because he's irreverent, he doesn't give a crap. And he's sarcastic to the bone, just like me. And he wrote a little essay on Columbus, and I want to read it to you. It's going to take probably a lot of time because it's like three pages. And if you can understand what I'm reading, he's very funny. He's extremely funny. So I'll just read it because the time is going by. Columbus. The human mind is affected with a singular disability to get a sense of an historical event without a gigantic figure in the foreground overtopping all his fellows. As surely as God liveth, if one hundred congenital idiots were set adrift in a scow to get rid of them, and, borne by favoring currents, into eyeshot of an unknown continent should simultaneously shout land ho, instantly drowning in their owl drool. We should have one of them figuring in history ever thereafter with a glowing, growing glory as an illustrious discoverer of his time. I do not say that Columbus was a navigator and a discoverer of that kind, nor that he did anything of that kind in that way. The parallel is perfect only in what history has done to Columbus. And some 70 millions of Americans are authenticating the imposture all they know how. In this whole black business, hardly one element of falsehood is lacking. Columbus was not a learned man, but an ignorant. He was not an honorable man, but a professional pirate. He was, in the most hateful sense of the word, an adventurer. His voyage was undertaken with a view solely to his own advantage, the gratification of an incredible avarice. In his lust for gold, he committed deeds of cruelty, treachery, and oppression, for which no fitting names are found in the vocabulary of any modern tongue, which I'm writing that dictionary. So we'll have those words soon. Um, to the harmless and hospitable peoples among whom he came, he was a terror and a curse. He tortured them, he murdered them. He sent them over the sea as slaves. So monstrous were his crimes, so consciousness his ambition, so insatiable his greed, so black his treachery to his sovereign, 
and in his mere imprisonment and disgrace, we have a notable instance of the miscarriage of justice. In the black abysm of this man's character, we may pile falsehood upon falsehood, but we shall never build the monument high enough to top the shadow of his shame. Upon the Coleman crown of that reverend pile, every angel will still look down and weep. This guy writes good. <clears throat> We are told that Columbus was no worse than the men of his race and generation, that his vices were those of his time. So vice, no vices are peculiar to any time. This world has been vicious from the dawn of history, and every race has wrecked, wreaked with sin. To say of a man that he is like his contemporaries is to say that he is a scoundrel without excuse. The virtues are accessible to all. Athens was vicious, yet Socrates was, was virtuous. Rome was corrupt, but Marcus Aurelius was not corrupt. To offset Nero, the gods gave Seneca. When literary France groveled at the feet of the third Napoleon, Hugo stood erect. Another one of my favorites. It will be a dark day for the world when infractions of the moral law by A and B are accepted as justifications of the sin of C. Think about that for a second. But even in the days of Columbus, men were not all pirates. God inspired enough of them to be merchants to serve as prey for the others. And while turning his honest penny by plundering them, the great Christopher was worsted by a Venetian trading galley and had to pickle his pelt in a six-mile swim to the Portuguese coast, a wiser and wetter thief. If he had had the hard luck to drown, we might none of us have been Americans, but the gods would have missed the revolting spectacle of an entire people prostrate before the blood slubbered image of a moral idiot performing solemn rites of adoration with a litany of lies. Sounds like Petri dish. Now, in comparison with the crimes of Columbus, his follies cut a sorry figure, yet the foolhardy enterprise to whose failure he owes his fame is entitled to distinction. With sense enough to understand the Earth's spheroid form, he thought it was pear-shaped, but without knowing knowledge of its size. He believed that he could reach... Oh, sh shoot. Now I lost it. He believed that he could reach India by sailing westward and died in the delusion that he had done so. A trifling miscalculation, a matter of eight or ten thousands of miles. If this continent had not happened to lie right across his way, he and his merry men would all have gone fishing with themselves for bait and the devil a hook among them. Firmness is persistence in the right. Obstinacy is persistence in the wrong. With the light that he had, Columbus was so wildly, dismally, and fantastically wrong that his refusal to turn back was nothing less than pig-headed unreason, and his crews would have been abundantly justified in despo dis deposing him. The wisdom of an act is not to be determined by outcome but by the performer's reasonable expectation of success. And after all, the expedition failed lamentably. It accomplished no part of its purpose, but by a happy chance it accomplished something better for us. As to the Red Indians, such of them as have been good enough to assist in apotheosis of the man whom their ancestors had the deep misfortune to discover, may justly boast themselves the most magnanimous of mammals. So he was kind of liberal, I mean, in some ways. He was way ahead of his time. I don't think I want to read the rest, even though it is good. 
because it's going to take up too much time. But read Columbus by Ambrose Bierce. Read everything by Ambrose Bierce, and it'll help you a lot. Um, yeah, just a little disgusted with the world because I see people railing, and they're railing in vain. Because unless they realize that something really drastic has to happen, it's just going to go on. It's not going to get any better. The touts are railing about parents being branded as domestic terrorists. And it's interesting because people do have that image, you know. They show footage, you know. I watch some of this crap. And they show footage of these guys with their flags and their masks with the red, white, and blue and Trump. And it's, it can be intimidating. I understand that. Because people are freaking stupid. They're absolute idiots. The masses don't know anything. 95% don't know crap. And the other 5% are grappling with what the truth is. But I see them on their shows, and they're mad as hell about this and that. 60,000 more coming up to the border. What are they going to do with them? And then 60,000 more, and I hear there's like a 400,000 they are coming in groups. So let's just see what happens. It'll be interesting to see what exactly happens. Because a lot of people are reaching the end of their rope, and a lot of people are thinking we got to dislodge ourselves from this country because otherwise things are going to go really bad. And I'm talking about governors and militias and National Guards from states doing what they have to do in the face of madness. So I was really annoyed because I saw, you know, even Judge Janine is like, we got to vote. And I can't believe I heard that because it's almost like saying we give up. If they think at the rate we're going now, China... You haven't watched. I'm sure you haven't. I mean, it's like we can do it the easy way or the hard way. That's what they're laying down now. It's 1939, and it's like about April, okay? You guys don't get it. It's a pattern that's going to happen. Wait to vote, and then we'll get the Republicans in, and everything will be all better. Yeah, right. Come on. I'm sick of Trump, I'm sick of Petri dish, I'm sick of both of them because they're divisive and they're just being used. I like Trump and he's being used as a symbol for everything 50% of this country thinks is bad. And the other half is using the other guy as a symbol, but not as bad as Trump. I mean, Trump to these left-wing... Um, black shirt, fucking uh, jackbooted thugs. That's what they are. I mean, they can act like hippies and have a flower and they can have a sign and they can have all kinds of stuff. They're Nazis. They're the worst of the worst and they're going to suffer the consequences of what they're doing because they don't know anything. And I hope after the conflagration, if some of them live, they will try to enlighten themselves to the truth. It has nothing to do with what they're doing. They were part of the problem, they caused the problem, and they're going to suffer the consequences. So I gave you a little bit of Ambrose Bierce about Columbus. I have no respect for him. I don't mind his holiday being wiped away, and they don't have to replace it with anything. Just have the day where people work. Regular day. Columbus Day. You can have a Tesla day or whatever. What's another, he's not Italian, okay, Marconi Day. He invented the radio. Have a Marconi Day. That, I would go, yeah, why not? An inventor that invented mass communication. Columbus Day, stupid. But you people will continue to celebrate it because you're stuck in a rut, and that's why you're waiting for the next election. Good luck with that. And I will bid you adieu. I said enough. I was very doomful. I enjoy it. So, ta-ta, and ni hao, peng yu men.